Hi, this is Ted. I want to introduce you to the new Backrack MVR 300. It's a product that's uh, launching right now, and it's a pretty exciting thing for anybody who has need for a refrigerant detector in occupied spaces such as hotel rooms, hospital rooms, and things like that, some place where you need a lot of these things. First off, I want to describe why you need these things. I'm not an engineer. Uh, however, I can speak to these, uh, this product. I've sold a number of them. I've sold a number of the old version. I'll show you the differences. But I want to show you why these things are important and, and what the need is. The first is, is that you have the ASHRAE standards. ASHRAE is an engineering organization uh, worldwide that is designed to help set standards and uh, that uh, are non-commercial and things that can improve the HVAC refrigeration uh, industry. And one of the things that they do is that they actually take refrigerant, any refrigerant that's being commercialized, and they do a number of studies on them. Actually, they, they provide them numbers. If a product has an ASHRAE number, such as R12, R22, uh, R404A. Uh, I think they're all the way up to like 454, 455 right now. If In order to get that number, you have to provide certain things. And one of those things is that they, they do a safety check on it. They need to find out if it's safe and what classification it has. So in the case of refrigerant for occupied spaces, which is what this, this is about. They have um, ASHRAE Standard 15, which looks at ASHRAE Standard 34, which is the one that actually is about refrigerant. And they come up with what's called a RCL. You can read it on the screen here. Basically, it's a number that they say in parts per million, how much, how much you can have in a small space and uh, still be safe. And in this case, the RCL for the most used product, which is R410A, is 26 pounds per 1,000 foot squared. I don't see a thousand on there, but it's for one, every 1,000 cubic feet. Unoccupied spaces, it's, uh, excuse me, that's for unoccupied spaces. For occupied spaces, such as hospital rooms, it's actually half that. And again, I'm not an engineer here. Uh, if you want to know more about this specific thing, I really suggest that you, that you send me an email. I have, I have some great tips on this or great um, you know, places where you can find some of this, but it really is pretty, pretty deep language and pretty hard to follow. So just suffice it to say that, that uh, you want to have, you want to follow these these things. So why why is that important and why am I even bringing it up? Well, I searched around and I tried to find a standard sort of HVAC system. This would be like what you would typically see at a house, let's say, or even in, um, in, a, in some buildings. You have basically a smaller or a, uh, a concentrated refrigerant that is down in, uh, in either a machine room or like in my house, it's in the basement, and that refrigerant is on a, in a coil, and the fan blows that over that coil and, and uh, blows uh, cool air throughout the house through a series of ductwork, and you lose some of you lose some of your efficiency in this ductwork because that ductwork's going to be warm, and you're blowing cold air into it, and it's going to you know take some of that energy. But it also is um, blowing it all in a, in, a, in a large area from a very small charge here. That uh, hasn't been a problem because if you have a, a leak in your house, like in my particular house, I have roughly 10 pounds of refrigerant and I'm blowing it through a 2,500 square foot house, it's, it's no big deal. However, when you go to these BRF type systems, you have, this is sort of a typical look of a VRF 
system where you have the evaporator or the refrigerant coil is right on the wall. Very, very efficient. Um, I have a room in my house where I, I, have, I have one of these and it cools the room off right away as compared to my central AC units which takes uh, a lot longer than that. But the, again, the refrigerant is right here in the room. And I try to find some good pictures of what that would look like. There's your unit here and it's blowing. Uh, it's putting refrigerant into each one of these rooms. In this case, you have a little bit larger unit. Uh, I did have a, one that I saw from Daikin here that is a little better description or, or, or view of it. You have your condensing unit outside and you have your evaporators inside with refrigerant. Now the, the issue becomes is that if you had a catastrophic leak, the refrigerant could potentially dump the whole charge into one room. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it could happen. And if that were to happen, it could get into dangerous levels, and that's where the uh, ASHRAE gets involved with their, with their standard. So what can you do about that? Well, you can design your, your place to um, take that into consideration where you don't have uh, confined spaces with uh, evaporators right in them, or um, it'll, have a, it'll put that out in a larger space and have you know, the smaller rooms without it. But um, you know, suffice it to say, that's not always possible. And you, uh, you, you're sort of forced to you know, make some decisions on how to lay these things out. And it's, and it's something that people are doing every day. Now, why would someone go with a VRF over uh, another product like the central air system or even a chiller, which, uh, which is a little bit different design? Why would you go with it? Because they're very, very efficient. You can run heating and cooling. Like this picture, you can run cooling in one room and heating in another. You can, um, uh, they have the variable speed motors and the variable speed fans and, and compressors, and they're super efficient. And uh, I, I can honestly say they're, they're truly a, quite a product. I, I'm very enamored with them, as, as are a lot of engineers around the country. So, so let's go into it. What can you do for these uh, occupied spaces? Well, we have an, a leak detector that is designed to be somewhat like a smoke detector. And what I mean by that is that this leak detector or safe space um, refrigerant detector is designed to go off at a high level. It's not designed to go off at low levels. In other words, if you were to have a, you know, something small in the room, you don't really want to you know, set off an alarm and, and everything. It's not, it's not worth it to, to, to do that. But if you get to a position where you actually do dump a lot of refrigerant into a room, especially like I'm thinking like a hotel room where you're laying down on a bed, uh, that refrigerant's going to start at the floor and move its way up. So uh, if you're laying there, the refrigerant is, is um, odorless, you can't see it, you can't smell it, uh, and it can overcome you. So it's, it, it is something you want to be aware of and you want to make sure that you're safe so again like this this unit is is somewhat like a smoke detector for that application and i kind of differentiate that away back rack we we sell a lot of uh, leak detectors that are very 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 sensitive down to one part per million and that is a you know a very very ex it's expensive comparatively however it's um it's really designed to stop leaks. This is really designed to, you know, uh, alarm you in a in the case of having a catastrophic leak. So, uh, what it, what is it for? It's for safety, compliance, uh, environmental protection, etc. You can read the, the bullets here. The uh, the benefit to this, however, is that uh, again, getting into the ashray, the uh, there are there isn't something right now that says you have to have these in rooms I mean, in the United States. You don't necessarily have to have them in, but the question is, is that we know that everything is going every time that some something's put in the ground in, in a law here, it starts moving forward and forward. And 
overseas, they are already required in occupied spaces. And in the United States, we really do recommend that you use them. So what is it? I've already shown you that slide. I'm going backwards here. Uh, here's your typical application. Like I said, in a hotel room, you see it here under the under the under the bed, um, nightstand. It's low. You don't see it. Um, offices where you, know, you got everybody in there. You dump the whole charge and not even know it. You have um, building owners, architects, it, just anybody who's building any of these VRF systems really should be looking into these as. Um, as a safety precaution. Why the MVR 300? Well, I want to show first, I want to show the, uh, the original one that we had. Um, let me bring that over here. This is uh, one that, that is made by Marco, which is a back rack company. They had, uh, they put this out for a number of years, and again, we've sold tons of these. And the unit is in a metal box. This is called the IAM 100. It's it's a it's in a metal enclosure, and it has a sensor built right in, and uh, and the alarm and alarm. But the problem was is if you put it low here on the wall, you could knock into it because it was not surface mount. So typically, what people would do is that they would add a um, they would add in this extra sensor here, and they put it behind a wall box. And uh, if you've seen the IAM or used it, that's just probably what you've done. So that is uh, a lot harder to install, and yeah, it's just a, it's a lot harder to install. And it didn't have the communications that the new one has. So the new MVR, it, it was designed from the ground up to be a lot easier. And there's your standard dual gang electrical box, and you put that in the wall, and you pop this thing right in. And you can see on the right hand side it's flush mount you're not going to hit it it has the alarm right in it it has um it has electric it's a relays on it so that you can uh, if you have a, a system I know, I know one particular one that i've seen out there that has the um, the hotel room or the thermostat for the dorm room whatever it is has a, a, the ability to accept a contact closure so if this thing got to a certain level it would close that contact and it would communicate to that, that um, thermostat and that thermostat would be hooked up to a centralized system such as a fire alarm system or something like that. The particular one I'm thinking about is actually wireless so it's pretty cool. But um, these things are inexpensive too. They're, they're less than 300 bucks and uh, obviously in quantity or even um, a little less than that. Let's go to, uh, hold on. They're programmable. They have, like I said, they have Modbus. They're, you can you can work with them right on your computer and, and set some of your alarm levels and things. I mean, realistically, you're probably going to get this thing from Bacharach with uh, with the preset settings, and and just leave it at that, and then connect it with your system. You don't really have to go into it. But one of the things that's really good about it is it has the alarm again built right into it, the buzzer and the alarm. It's a visual and a, um, uh, and a buzzer. But uh, if, if down the line you have to, you're, you're supposed to adjust these sensors, they make it very easy to adjust from the outside. But let's say you got to change something. We made it so that you can pop out that sensor and just pop in a new one. It's a very simple thing. And um, this is the main thing you want to do. You, know, you might say, well, why the heck would I want to do something where I'm spending money I quote unquote don't have to spend well if someone gets hurt in this or they're thinking they got hurt they're going to say well why didn't you have these things in the room why didn't you have some way of knowing that you had a leak or you were reading some sort of levels why didn't you do this or on the other side of this you can say I have doc. I I know that I didn't have a leak because we have leak detection in every room. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna stop it at this. You know, we would appreciate your support at our company, Gartland.com. Again, we have some expertise in this, and this is uh, my first first try to put some information out there on it. Thank you very much.